Hi everyone and welcome to Huddersfield Town's pre-match show ahead of Saturday's Skybet Championship game against Middlesbrough. I'm absolutely delighted today to be joined by two people who are going to help us in the build-up to this big Skybet Championship game. We're joined by former Middlesbrough, of course, uh, Cardiff, Halifax Town, among others, striker Andy Campbell. Andy, uh, welcome. Thank and you very much. Someone very familiar to town fans, our head of goalkeeping, Paul Clements. Clem, welcome. All right, guys. Right. Clem, I'd like to start with you. I want to thank you, first of all, for, for giving up your time. And I think time is more pertinent than ever now, probably, because there's so little of it. We rolled straight back from Wickham. I think you got back at two in the morning on Wednesday. And then we've got another really challenging Skybet Championship game ahead of us against uh, Middlesbrough on Saturday. What's it like for you guys at the moment? I mean, obviously, midweek games are not a new thing for anyone that's involved in football. But the sheer volume of them between now and the new year, I mean, it, it is a, a unique time for many reasons, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's it's um, it's it's just carnage, to be honest with you, Dave. It's it's um, you just don't get time to think. You know, you, you're on the bus on the way home, like you say the other night, and we're watching, you know, clips from the from from the previous game, working on the next game, and you just any minute you can really. Um, you know, the staff were back in the training ground at seven a.m., so it was a quick uh, quick turnaround and, and go again. And I've not known anything like it, obviously. You've had like three games a week before, but then you normally get a little window where it's a Saturday, Saturday, but it's just, uh, it's just relentless. But, um, you know, the games are what you're in it for anyway. So, you know, we're enjoying them, but it's just, just trying to cram a week's work into two days. And I think sometimes perhaps it, it, people, you know, football fans who obviously see the games and see everything that's going outwardly don't perhaps see the amount of analysis that it takes to come up against a side like Middlesbrough, or a really, really good Skybet Championship side. We'll, we'll talk to Andy about Borough in a, in a few seconds, but how difficult is it to, to cram that amount of work in, to, re, to review what we did well and didn't do so well at Wickham, to then look at Middlesbrough's strengths, how we adapt what we do to perhaps tailored against what they do? I mean, it, it is a full-on job at the moment, isn't it? Yeah, and, and the thing is, obviously, they're playing at the same time as you. I mean, luckily, last night, obviously, we, we all got to sit down and watch the match because they played on a different day to us. But a lot of the time, they're playing at the same time as you. And, you know, they're trying new things. I'm not just speaking about Middlesbrough, other teams. And you're just trying to keep on top of what teams are doing. And obviously, normally, where you're looking at a team for a couple of weeks coming up, you, you're literally, like, trying to catch up on three or four games in, 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 in hours, really, rather than days. It's... Um, you know, it's, it's just that really, you know, we, we know that teams are going to change through injury, through missing players like us with COVID, etc. Um, so you're just trying to keep on top of the squads. And um, obviously, we've got a fantastic analysis department here, absolutely top drawer. And, um, you know, without them, we'd have no chance. And, you know, as soon as I sat down on the bus the other night, I had a, I had a hard drive full of middles with stuff for me on the way home. And, um, you know, the lads work superbly hard. They really do. I brought that down for you, Clem, as well, actually. I was giving it before we set off on the <laughs> yeah, so it's a, a full club thing. Um, Middlesbrough, we've, we've mentioned there as well, a really strong side and a different side to the one we played last season, as you often get with a, a change in management. Andy, obviously, you, you see a lot of Middlesbrough having a great season so far. I think only Norwich have beaten them in the last 12 games, I believe. A great win against Derby County the other night. Just how promising a start and how promising a season could this be for Borough? Um, I think you just got to look at the the, the manager and just uh, just know that he knows the championship inside out. He's he's missed the championship. He's he's got promoted so many times. You know what I mean? His defensive record this season is is just unbelievable. You know that he's he's set his soul out. He's worked on certain things in the summer. He's brought certain personnel and players in to work on a system. Um, it's not the most pleasing to the eye. You know what I mean? As you'll probably find out the weekend, but it's it's effective. Uh, it's effective and it works. It works for the, the kind of football that he wants to play. And, you know what I mean? I, I, before yesterday, you know what I mean? They didn't score a lot of goals. Um, you know what I mean? It was nine goals in, in 12 games. And, and yesterday, they, they, they came, came across a, a poor derby side, I think. You know what I mean? And I think they, if, they, if they were playing against anybody um, a, little bit, a little bit better and a little bit more confident, the, 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 probably the game wouldn't have been as easy. But, you know I mean? Going into a tough away game, you know what I mean? You want to come off the back of a, a very convincing 3 0 win. And um, Neil's doing a great job. He's got his own backroom staff in. For what he's who we trust from Cardiff City and, and 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 previous and yeah it's so far so good I think he's surprising everyone he's surprising me you know I think as I love the club and uh, still in Middlesbrough fan but I didn't expect them to be where they are in the start of the made is just phenomenal really you've referenced Neil Warnock there already Andy's coaching staff Ronnie Jepson Ian Bennett's up there as well now yep. all names familiar to Huddersfield Town fans I mean I I'm a Town fan as my accent probably gives me away my first Huddersfield Town side was Neil Warnock's Huddersfield Town side back in 1993. Yeah. He got us promoted. He's a serial promotion winner at this level. 
what has he changed? What do you think the fundamentals are that he's changed at Borough that's, that's seen this turnaround to see him sit seventh going into the game? Um, I think one thing he does, he, he changes things what nobody else can say. You know what I mean? He goes in the training ground and, and, and makes everything right fundamentally. You know what I mean? From the bottom all the way through to the top. And uh, he makes everyone believe. He makes players believe. He makes, he makes the fans believe. And it's all, it's all well and good sitting in front of a camera and telling teams that they're going to uh, they're going to change the fortunes round, and they're going to play a certain way. But he does it. He does it with panache, and he does it with a bit of arrogance as well. And he does it with the right way. And um, he's not getting any younger as well. Was he seventy three year old? And he's still got the passion, still got the desire, still cycles to train. And he's he's turned a group of players around who had zero confidence. You know what I mean? Some players look like the the different players. You know what I mean? And they haven't had to spend a lot of money. They haven't um, spent the kind of money they have in in in, in previous years under Steve Gibson and. Um, and the managers, like I say, he's doing a great job defensively. They're doing, they're doing really, really well. Uh, offensively, as I say, it's not the greatest to watch, but you know, I mean, uh, last night was was a perfect opportunity. If you put your chances away, you know, what I mean, you can win a game very handsomely. And um, if they can do that again towards towards Christmas time, they can leave themselves in a good position for the uh, for the tail end of the season, so to speak. I think hearing that they're, they're so good defensively again will be no surprise to any Huddersfield Town fan that that watched Town under Neil. Uh, perhaps no surprise to you as well, Clem, given one of the defenders on Middlesbrough's books. Obviously, you've got quite a unique insight into Borough with, with your lad Nathan Wood being there. How much have you been plugged by Carlos on that front coming up into this game? I mean, it's an interesting <laughs> position for you, isn't it, Clem? Yeah, to, to be fair to Nath, we, we speak every day after training and in, it's normally in the week leading up to Middlesbrough. We just agree not to talk anything about teams and stuff like that. But um, he did ring me after the game last night and we had a chat. And he, he's obviously disappointed he's not in the side. Um, mm. He played against Forrest and thought he'd done well. But, you know, I'm probably helping Neil in that respect to put his uh, feet back on the ground. But, um, but yeah, no, he's enjoying it. And obviously... Um, you know, I said to Nath when they're keeping that many clean sheets and, and not even not even really conceding chances, like it's difficult for him to, to get in that side. And um, obviously, I think Grant Hall's out now for a little bit more um, of a period than he thought. So that gives Nath a chance if something else happens. And um, yeah, I'm, I've done it where he's been on the bench before last season, but I've never done it where he's on the pitch. So it, it would be weird. I don't know how... Oh, it would be like if Fraser Campbell goes and smashes him. Am I going on <laughs> Fraser? Or, well, I don't know. But um, but yeah, he's um, he, he just wants to play, and um, obviously, um, you know, he's got a good career ahead of him if he keeps going the way he's doing. What has Nathan said to you about Neil? And I'm not specifically talking about the game this weekend. That, like you said, it's right not to talk about that in, yeah. in, in the terms of Nathan. But in terms of the impact that Neil has made on the squad, Andy just referenced there the, the confidence of the players. Is that Neil's strength? Because from the outside in, is a, is the way he is with people, the way he is with players, I can imagine is a big strength of Neil's. What's it, what's it been like from what Nathan said to you? Yeah, he's been... Um, I mean, the minute he walked in the door, I said, right, that's you staying up because you just expect that he's going he's gonna to get you, get you out of it, which he did. Yeah. And um, Nathan was due to go on loan or there was speak of him going, uh, talk of him going on loan. Um, and um, I think... Uh, Dale had a, had an issue in pre-season so Neil took him on the pre-season and he did well and he pulled Nathan straight away and was just honest with him and just said look um, I like what you've done I'm going to keep you here until January because I think you've got a chance of breaking in um, if you break in you'll stay in and if you don't um, we'll look to get you game time elsewhere and you know, so far he's been true to, the, true to his word because he trusted him against Nottingham Forest and um, you know, Neil uh, likes his experienced players but he you know, he threw Nathan and um, he did well with him in the press, I thought. I thought it was genius from him. He, um, you know, he, he spoke well of him after the game and then sort of brought him back down in the next press conference and pulled Nathan at the training ground and said, this is why I've said it. I'll leave that conversation private. But I thought, top draw management for me. Um, and, and like Andy says, he just, he's just, <laughs> you know, Nathan says he's just got away with the players now. It's hard to say that, but, you know, um, what that is, he's just got that bit of magic that, that just gets the best out of players. And, um, yeah, when Nathan went on the pitch, he, Nathan felt confident from what Neil had said to him and, um, and had a good game. So, so, yeah, he enjoys it. Andy, how was Neil's appointment received by Borough fans when his name was the one? That, I mean, it was a, they didn't really have much time to digest it. It happened in the space of about, about six hours from memory yeah. or maybe even shorter than that, but... What was the initial reaction like? Because I think sometimes Neil's teams perhaps come with an unfair stigma in terms of exactly how they play or what they deliver. But 
I've not known a club's fans not love Neil being in charge of them for a period. Like I, I can only speak from personal experience. I loved that team. What 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 was the view like, and how much has it changed? Um, well, Clem, Clem said it earlier on. He said um, that when he knew and everyone else knew that the club was staying up because he just has that he has that um, persona about him. He just knows what to do to keep a club in that division. He knows the league inside out, and and I think every Middlesbrough fan was so excited because. They were, we, were, we were in a really precarious position. Um, I believe that it was touch and go if they were going to stay up, you know what I mean? They left it a little bit late under, under Neil to do that. You know what I mean? There was still an option and a possibility that they were going to go down all the way, all the way to the wire. And uh, thankfully, we stayed up. Um, I had every confidence in the staff and the players and, uh, and that the club were going to do that. Um, the, 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 the decision came in the summer. Uh, was, was he going to stay? Was his job remit just to come in, steady the ship, keep him up, and then we move on and go somewhere else? And... He got offered the opportunity to stay. Um, I said that the, the, the length of contract's always been quite candid and quite a secret. You know what I mean? Is he is he just here for the year? You know what I mean? And Neil's always a, a quite honest man that he he doesn't really like the, the Premier League. And if he get, his team ever gets promoted, he always seems to walk away. Um, the only time he didn't was at Cardiff City. I know he did it at QPR once, but he did it at Cardiff. And you know, I was there the the day that Cardiff got promoted. And um, and his his um, talk after the game in the in the supporters uh, uh, player of the year do was that he thought about resigning on the spot. And it's just, it's just the kind of man he is. He, he, he loves this league. He loves the hustle and bustle. Clem was on about and you. We both were talking about um, this midweek games and the games coming thick and fast. He loves that. You know what I mean? At the, at the age he is, he, he loves getting up on the morning. He loves going to games. Just pure game, game, game. And um, the supporters still love him. You know what I mean? They love him more because you're doing well, obviously. But I think that supporters don't really care about a middle of style of football. You know, we had Brian Robson, Steve McLaren, Gareth Southgate, probably played more attractive football, but didn't win anything. You know what I mean? Apart from one trophy, you know what I mean? We've been quite starved of relative success over the years and we've brought some really good players in. For me, it's time to get the fundamentals right, get the young players back on the, on the pitch for me because, you know what I mean? I think we've been starved a little bit of bringing through young talent and, and young players. Dale's a stalwart now for me. He's, you know what I mean? Will he, will he move on in January? He's been talked for a long time. Nathan's now making a name for himself. And um, I want young players to come through and make a name for himself. Like, we all had the opportunity we were young players. We're going to talk about young players in a while, specifically to Huddersfield Town as well. But just sticking on Borough, Andy, the away record is particularly notable when you look at how good Borough have been on, on the road this year. Sometimes not with loads of possession. So the easy assumption to make is that that's an effective counter-attacking style. Is that fair or is there more to it than that? Uh, one thing he does do, you know what I mean? You can't second-guess him. You can't second-guess his, uh, his, his selections. You know what I mean? His tactics and, his, in, in his, and his, the way he goes about the game is probably similar. Um, he sits behind the ball, he, the break on, on, with, with pace and with, 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 with precision. But um, yeah, listen, the, the amount of goals that, 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 that don't let in away from home... That, that, Clem said earlier on, it's not just the goals they don't concede, it's the chances they don't concede as well, you know what I mean? If you don't shoot, you don't score, but if you don't let teams shoot, then they can't score, you know what I mean? So it's not about that the goalkeeper's keeping the minute or the defence is playing well. They're just not, um, they're just really solid at the minute. And, you know, away from home, you Brentford 0-0, Blackburn 0-0, um, Cardiff, they get another draw, Bristol City, they're going to win 1-0, you know what I mean? QPR, they get a draw, you know, there's not many goals. Yes, they don't score many goals, but... Yes, they're still exciting games because I, I watched the last two at Brentford and Blackburn and just how they didn't win both them games is, is beyond me. They created enough chances to win the games. They don't score enough goals. But, you know, I mean, you always think in the championship that, 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 that you're going to have a chances to win this game. And it's, uh, it's going to be a, another chess match, you know what I mean? Two games who, you know what I mean? Uh, two teams who want to win this game. Two teams under relatively new managing, uh, management styles and um, one team was probably going to go for it. One team was going to, was going to sit behind the ball and, and defend and frustrate. And you know, what I mean, it'll be a really good encounter again. I think. Definitely, uh, the defensive record of Middlesbrough, particularly on the road, mentioned there, Clem. Obviously, there was a, a goalkeeper brought in by Borough in the summer. I'm going to lean on you as the resident goalkeeping expert here, Paul. Uh, Marcus Bettinelli has obviously come in and, and on paper looks to have had a really good start at Borough. What, what? Obviously, a, a season championship campaign and above. We know him from, from his time at Fulham. Good goalkeeper at this level. Yeah, and um, obviously in, in the summer there was no secret um, in terms of we, we didn't know what was happening with Ben and um, we had a backup list and we certainly spoke to, um, to Fulham about his availability. Um, and um, yeah, like you say, he's one of them keepers, a bit like Andy was saying earlier, when the team gets promoted and then you, you kind of find yourself out of the team because of the level in the Premier League, but he's, he's absolute, without a doubt, a top draw, top draw championship keeper and there's... There's, there's plenty of them that can 
that can play at this level. And then when they go up and it's a little bit quicker and a little bit more different skill set required, then then sometimes they can find themselves out of the team. But we would have had um, we would have had no hesitation in taking him. And obviously, um, I know a lot about the goalkeeping department at Middlesbrough. You know, with Sol Brin behind him. A great young keeper, fantastic young keeper, and uh, that'll be great for him to learn off. Um, Kicks it an absolute country mile, (laughs) which uh, suits uh, suits their style. But he's another one that I can only speak through Nathan, really, that he's been great with Nathan, um, especially when he played. And, um, you know, he's he's just he's just a good human, first and foremost, and a good goalkeeper, secondly. Always important. It would be wrong when we're talking about promising young goalkeepers, uh, Clem, not to speak about Ryan Schofield. And it's funny how uh, these coincidences happen in football. But obviously, Ryan made his Skybet Championship debut at home to Middlesbrough last yeah. season, kept a clean sheet, got his opportunity on Tuesday night in, a, in a, a really challenging game for goalkeepers, I suspect, at Wickham, kept a clean sheet. I mean, in terms of taking opportunities, I don't suppose you can ask really for much more than what Ryan has done in his two league opportunities so far. No, and um, at the Luton game, he, he, was, he was number three. Um, and two games later, he finds himself in the team. And, and that's exactly what football is. It's opportunities. And um, he suffered a very, very unlucky injury at the start of the season, which I think you know, Dave, everyone at the club was gutted for him because he was, um, he was doing so well. And it just shows you what kind of work ethic he's got to come back five weeks early. Um, he just you know we were in the badminton courts every day we were playing table tennis every day we we're out on the grass doing distribution most days and he just didn't want to didn't didn't want to set him back and you know he's he sat patiently and waited and um you know um Joel's opportunity didn't go as well as he would have wanted to and ultimately because Ryan's been performing that well in training he, he put a question in the manager's mind and um the manager went with Ryan Ryan's opportunity, he's kept another clean sheet. Um, ben will be available for the weekend. He's, he's, he's give the gaffer a decision to make. So, um, you know, I, I've known Ryan a long time now and every time he's been given an opportunity, whether it's the day I picked him up from school to go and play for the under-23s because Lloyd had got injured and he took that opportunity when he got, went to England and forced himself to be the number one. He's, when he went to FC United at 17 and we were like, oh, should we, shouldn't he? He's just took his opportunities and um, the more he does that, the more exposure he'll get and, um, and hopefully he goes on to have a good career here at Huddersfield Town. Carlos spoke a lot about what he and obviously we should say in this point that Carlos was a goalkeeper himself as well. But uh, he thinks yeah, it reminds me every day. To be fair, I bet he does. Yeah, it's the <laughs> mentality thing uh, for goalkeepers because, it, and I thought he explained it really nicely. It's probably something you'll echo that if you're a forgive me here, Andy, if you're a striker and you make a mistake, that sometimes it's possible for a teammate to pick that up for you. So you mm. might hit the post from six yards, but then someone sticks the rebound in. Yeah, if you're a goalkeeper, and it you know you, you let one in that you feel like you shouldn't have. You are there for the world to see. Um, and I imagine quite a lonely place at times. When you get, you talk about being thrown into opportunities there, Clem, and having to take them. Should it be a surprise in that sense, that, or, or a good omen, should I say, that if Ryan is able to take on board situations, that that's, that bodes really well to make a, a long career as a goalkeeper? Because you need that kind of very good, thanks, robust character, don't you, as a as a goalkeeper to kind of be a success? Yeah, sorry, Dean Oil was just saying hello there. I thought I'd better say hello back. <laughs> yeah, you better yeah. say hello. <laughs> Yeah, I, th- I think at the end of the day, um, you know, we, we try at the club to get, to keep the keepers in rhythm in terms of playing B team games as much as we can. Um, you know, we've got good goalkeepers, in, and even with the B team games, there's probably not enough game time. So you do, you are relying on that mentality to go in and not chase the game because if you haven't played for a few weeks and, and you're playing and you're thinking, right, I need to catch a cross, and you go to try and catch a cross, and, and then you end up coming for a cross that you shouldn't have. Um, I think Ryan was really calm the other night. Even when he had the header, he, he made the right decision. He just clearly technically hasn't been working on his head because it hit him straight in the face. But even after that, he just kept his calm, delayed the shot, relied on his defenders helping him out. And I thought he kicked on after that. He made um, good decisions on a tough night. Um, it was his first 90 minutes in, in since February. And, you know, he's had a 45 and a 60 to go in and do that for me, just shows his mental strength's top draw, regardless of what he is as a goalkeeper, top draw. And, um, 
you know, he trained this morning. He was excellent. And he's obviously got in his mind, am I in or out at the weekend? Because Ben's back. So, you know, let's see what happens. He can only control what he can control. And one of them was his opportunity the other night, which he, he controlled very well. Absolutely. Andy, you'll be glad to know I'm going to stop talking about goalkeepers in a second. But uh, I want to talk to you about debuts, actually, because although this wasn't Ryan's debut, something else that was as notable for town fans the, the other night at Wickham was a, a new name on the team sheet. So Kieran Phillips, who's a 20-year-old striker here, was on the, uh, the first team bench for the first time. Uh, I could talk to you all day about Kieran's backstory. He's had some horrendous injuries to overcome, and it, it felt like a big moment. But uh, as a player, Andy, you made your debut at 16, obviously, for Borough. And I, I just wanted to yeah. talk to you about that, because um, we've talked about Middlesbrough, and there, you, know, you want to see the young players get their opportunity there. It's something we've talked about a lot here at Huddersfield Town, about creating these opportunities for young players. Talk to us about your debut, if you would, and, and I'm thinking how long in advance you knew that you were going to be playing, how a 16-year-old can handle that, whether it's a good thing, the naivety, or you know, it's, a, it's too much to handle, perhaps, at times. What, what, what can you remember of your debut at 16? It was handled really well for me because I um, I went to the first team game thinking I was I was doing jobs. Um, I was I set the kit out on the on the afternoon with the kit man Alex Smith and I went with a players lounge to have dinner, pre match meal with the boys. And uh, when the manager did his team talk and named the team, he, he named me on the bench, which I was sat there a little bit gobsmacked and thinking, Jesus, this is just um, is <laughs> he just said my name and I you know I remember talking to John Pickering uh, at the time, God rest his soul, that he. That he said to me, this is your opportunity, this is your time. He said, go and enjoy it. He said, your family know all about it. You know what I mean? The, the manager spoke to your family this morning and told them what was going to happen. And It was all done a little bit behind my back. And uh, I listen, I, I think it's, it's absolutely fantastic. It was a perfect opportunity for me and uh, time for me to enjoy it, you know, and, and, and a platform to me to really showcase what I can do. Because it's, like Clem said, you know what I mean? All these games that you get an opportunity with now, there was, now there's what, under 18 leagues, under 23 leagues, A, a games, B games. But you want to play in front of a crowd. Yeah, I know there's, there's no crowd, but you want to play in competitive games. And at first team, there's just, it's the best best place in the world to be. And, and I bet at the week, at midweek at Wickham, he was sat on the bench just chomping at the bit to get on and wanting to warm up because I remember for the, the, my debut, I, I warmed up, I think, for the full game because I just wanted to see the crowd and I just wanted to be that close to the game in case I didn't get on, you know. that I remember I got the opportunity to come on about eight minutes to go and it was... Uh, it felt like a lifetime to get on. Uh, it felt like the game flew by really quickly and it was just uh, over over far too quick. But um, I think I got about eight, nine minutes in the end and it was just an amazing feeling and something that no one can take away. And I probably didn't play as much as I wanted to uh, the following season and things, but it's all part of the development. And, you know what I mean? The younger, I think you get your opportunity. You know, like Clem said about Nathan, you know what I mean? That you, you handle sometimes and handle in the right way. At the time as a player, you probably don't think you are. But I think the manager and the, and the coaching staff get it completely right. I think you touched on it almost with your fan hat on as well, Andy, that football fans like to see this, don't they? You know, it's, it's, it's one of them things that always kind of gets people a bit excited when there's a, a new name on the team sheet that perhaps you haven't seen before and plenty of town fans will have seen our players play for the B team and the, the underage groups. But it, there is a, a sense of pride that comes through seeing a player turn out for the first team that maybe is a local lad like yourself or you know has come through the academy, even if they're not local. It, it's a different type of feeling, isn't it? You could, it it almost builds a connection with supporters, someone you can relate to. Yeah, listen, they could be from the same area. They could know someone, someone's dad, mum, whatever, grandma, you know what I mean? There's always a link towards it. And, and I believe young players, are, they're also given, given that little bit more extra time as well, you know what I mean? That, that fans want it to happen a little bit more. And I think that's key because, um, especially being a centre forward, I think you, you judge by the goals you score. Whereas, you know what I mean? Young players just want to run through a brick wall for that football club and for the fans and for the, for the teammates and for themselves and the family. And, uh, for me, I'm desperate to see uh, young players come through and I, I'd love nothing more than for a rule to say that, that young players from a certain certain area, you know, local local kids, have to have to be in the match team squad because it's just, it's key for me, key for, key for the area, key for the clubs, key for the players themselves and it's just, uh, it just gives other players, you know what I mean, other players in, in their youth team and reserve teams that, that, that there's light at the end of the tunnel as well. Clem, I want to ask you specifically about our guys now when we're talking about young players and I think I'd precursor this by saying that the guys in the team right now are not doing a bad job. So I, I, no one's hankering to, to see people replaced or et cetera. I think we should acknowledge that because I think some of the displays in particular have been really eye-catching this season, although not always reflected in the end result. Uh, but with the number of games that we alluded to, not just between now and the end of the year, but going into the new year as well when the FA Cup gets underway, you feel like there's going to be opportunities created for other players because it just seems impossible that the, the same guys can play week on week on week. It, it seems inevitable.
inevitable that there's going to be opportunities created for some of the younger players at town. So you obviously work across all the age groups. You work very closely with the B team alongside Neil Bennett and the academy side. You've got a first-hand view on some of these players, not just Kieran, but the, uh, the B team, a very young B team uh, in the second half, putting a, a really good display against Sheffield Wednesday here at Canal Side yesterday. How excited should town fans be about some of the players that we've got that might need a couple of years yet? They might be in the team next week, who knows? But how excited should they be? Honestly, I, I can't wait. I can't wait. And it's, um, you know, uh, we've got the FA Youth Cup coming up um, quite soon against Newcastle. And, um, you know, me and Danny Schofield have already made arrangements as first team staff to, to meet the, the guys at the hotel later on because we want to be there because we want to see them. And, you know, there has been opportunities already this season in terms of like, you know, Romani started the season. We were missing a centre back. Do we go and sign an emergency cover? No, we just go to our academy. Ben Jackson, the same. Um, it's, you know, some of the performances we're seeing on the training pitch as well with the first team, outstanding. And, um, you know, um, some of the boys, I don't want to put pressure on them by naming names, but, you know, can't even speak the language yet. And you're just looking at them going, wow, wait till they can understand us. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, to be fair, it's, not, it's not taking a rocket scientist out to figure out who they are now. You, you've not named the names, but you've named them. Mate. That's okay. But yeah, carry on, carry on. Oh, it's, um, listen, I, I, I love it when um, the young players train with us and, and Lee Bromberry has been absolutely brilliant in terms of making that happen. And, um Obviously, Carlos was recruited to to help that happen, and um, I think you know they're around us every day. And I think when you, you know, Andy will tell you the same. Like if you're a young striker and you're going up against a, a Richard Stearman and a Christopher Schindler, you've got to find a way because that's what's going to happen when you may make your debut or may have to come on. And um, hmm. if, if you're left in the youth team just playing with youth team players it can be too easy for you so as soon as they find it too easy we bump them up we challenge them and honestly I, I can't wait um, you know like I say the lads in the team are doing more than fine but we know that if, if we've, we've got um, a few injuries suspensions COVIDs um, fatigue whatever it is we, we, we don't need to go and sign players we can just look to the academy and go Out of interest Andy just to what Clem said who were your centre halves that knocked you around in training and helped you prepare for the kind of robustness that we needed to play for the first team at Borough? Uh, well, there was one, Nigel Pearson. And, you know what I mean, he didn't, uh, he didn't squirm on anything. He gave me everything what I needed, you know what I mean? And then my first, my first full game against Neil Ruddock against, at Liverpool, you know, he, he did everything to me in one afternoon, when, which I thought, do you know what? It's not ever going to get any worse than this, you know what I mean? And, <laughs> and people say about, about when you cross that white line and, you know what I mean, you, you're protected as well. So, you know what I mean, it's... It's not that you, you've got to be intimidated and scared, but like Clem said, you know what I mean? You're coming up against grown men. You've got to find that something different to get past them because it's not like the, the ball over the top or, you know what I mean, or you can get running at people because experienced defenders don't get involved in all that rubbish. They just stand the, stand the ground and, and get stuck in. And it's, uh, you know what I mean, you've always got to find that something different. But then at this, on the flip side, um, experienced defenders hate playing against young players because you've got that pace, you've got that rawness. They don't know what you're going to do. So it's a, a little bit of cat and mouse and you can reinvent yourself and really uh, really stamp your authority down as well. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. I think, Clem, as well, and I'm, I'm going to say this because I'm the club's PR guy ultimately, but I think the thing that struck me yesterday when I watched that game was that, um, and we, we've made a lot of noise about this again, but you could see it in action yesterday. Well, I watched the B team, Danny Schofield in charge, perhaps no surprise given that, but it looked like the first team. It looked like the first team in full pomp. The, the names might be different, the, the individuals, different varying abilities, but the style of play, I mean, for that last half hour in particular, we kind of just ran all over the opposition and, and it looked like the first team when they've been in the best moments this season as well. And, and it, it's easy to talk about these things and, 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 hope and, and put all the planning into it behind the behind the uh, scenes and training but when you see it come to fruition like that that's what gives you hope isn't it I suppose yeah and we've spoke about giving um, young players opportunities but you've also got to try and set them up to be successful and you know I, I've been at clubs before where the, the B team don't play the same as the first team so if you're in any position on the pitch doesn't matter if it's goalkeeper or not but our players play the same passes make the same runs are expected to do the same things in every, so if if for argument's sake we we need a number eight to come and drop in on Saturday, they know what to do, they know their role, and that they're trying to execute it in in B team games and training so it's um it just helps me and the rest of the staff 
to give the same messages. Um, you know, like you, you alluded to earlier, I'll go and work with the 17s. I'm giving the same message that I'm giving to the first team and, and that's happening with Danny Schofield, with Jonathan Worthington, whoever it is, um, whether it's an IDP where there's quite a, a lot of the staff um, in terms of the physical staff, the psychological staff, we're all giving the same message. So they know when they do step on that pitch at the John Smiths or wherever in the championship, they know what to do. So that gives them confidence to go and do what they can do and set them up for success. And, um, and yeah, it's um, honestly, it just fills us with pride when we see things like yesterday and um, you know, some of them lads had traveled as well, by the way. So, you know, I hadn't had the best preparation. Well, let's say, good preparation because they're involved with the first team but um but yeah we're, we're just we're just excited about the future really and um and and the more that get in the better for us absolutely and we're, we're coming to the end of the time now so i just want to bring it back to the game on saturday uh there'll be plenty of town fans that haven't seen much of middlesbrough this season i'm sure so uh who should town fans look out for who are the ones that are really performing for middlesbrough so far this season um, it, it obviously depends on personnel and things. You know, I mean, he does he does change things uh, differently at, at home. But for me, I think Tavernier has been uh, he's been a breath of fresh air, especially the last couple of weeks. I know he had a, a bit of a miss up uh, at the weekend with a penalty, but you know, I mean, he was confident enough to go, to play again yesterday. Um, Duncan Watmore, I thought fitted in really well yesterday. Will he play two games in in a in a number of, a number of days? Possibly, possibly not. I'm a big fan of Spence. I think he's electric, giving the ball, and you know, what I mean, he's he's raw. He's got talent. Um, You've obviously got the experience of British on Belonga, uh, Patrick Roberts. You know what I mean? I, I just think it could be. It's got it's got all a recipe for a really really exciting game because there's good footballers on show. It doesn't always always work out like that, but you know what I mean. The, the manager will go with a game plan. Um, it, as like you know, I've alluded to before, and I'm, I'm not I'm not ashamed to say it won't be a, a fantastic game of football from Middlesbrough's point of view. But you know what I mean? I'm, I'm sure he'll go there with a the, with the right tactics to get a positive result to move forward. Have you managed to see anything or much of Huddersfield Town under Carlos Corber and Andy? Have you, or, or if so, if not, what are you expecting from Town from a Middlesbrough perspective? Yeah, I've watched bits and bobs. Um, you know what I mean? Obviously, I, I knew I knew uh, Fraser from his uh, his time at Cardiff City, so I, I, I've always kept a, uh, a close eye. And obviously, a few of the players that I've, I've come across uh, during my my career, and um, yeah, he scored a couple of a couple of cotton goals this season, and uh, and. And hopefully he continues for himself because you know what I mean. I know as a centre forward yourself, getting getting more experience, it's probably put that weight on your shoulders a little bit, and you want to do well because you know you haven't got long left, so to speak. So you know, my hope for him, he, he does really well. I just hope he doesn't score the weekend. Fraser mentioned he got goal of the month, then did he just in passing? <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. No, that's good to hear. Well, chaps, thank you very much for your time today. Uh, Clem, I'm going to you all the best of luck this weekend. I'll probably see you in five minutes, but uh, on record, all the best for this weekend. Andy, thanks for joining us. Cheers, guys. Um, all the best to you and Middlesbrough for the rest of the season as well. Thanks, guys. Uh, the camp fans as well, I should mention that uh, the game is on iFollow HTFC this weekend. If you're a season card holder, you'll get access. There's details on the website on how you can do that. If not, the match passes are just £10. We hope to uh, have you join us on Saturday. Thank you all.